लेट्स गो लाइव Good evening to one and all present here. I welcome you in today's mega power series event, where our CEO and founder, Dr. Mohit Batra, and Mr. Sunil Damania, CIO Mojo PMS, will discuss the market dynamics and unveil a triple S investment strategy to help us navigate the market volatility. Towards the end, we would also be having a Q and A session, so please post your questions in the comment box below. Over to you, Sunil sir. Uh, thanks Mahata, a lot Mahata, and very, very warm, warm welcome warm. all of you i know it's a uh, season's time it's a holy time and we have very exciting uh, 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 news for all of you during holy time it's a celebration time and i think uh, you will definitely going to celebrate post this webinar but you know today is a very important event uh, uh, in the journey of uh, uh, the markets mojo group why because we are going to today reveal a very innovative triple s strategy uh, uh, in front of our investors and this strategy is basically been devised keeping in mind the volatile time you know we are uh, uh, you know there is one terminology that has been coined by uh, unilever globally called vuca time uh, uh, volatile uh, uncertain uh, 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 and very very uh, you know uh, kind of a anxious time we are living in that kind of a, a period where uh, there is a great amount of uncertainty because of geopolitical situation uh, uh, in india we are trying to figure out what's going to happen uh, because the every day we see political events happening and and valuations are definitely in a very uh, frothy situation so we said let's try to navigate this uh, uh, volatile time through a triple s strategy what is that strategy is all about that we are going to discuss Uh, today but before that a small disclaimer that investment in securities market are subject to market risk please read offer documents very carefully and past performance is no indicator of future returns and since it's a holy time i think markets mojo has come out a very interesting scheme uh, for all of you what the scheme says is very simple if you wish to go for mojo professional it comes at 14000 triple nine for one year and the best part is that it's not only 84% discount on mrp but you also get one year additional free in other words you pay 14999 you take away 84% uh, discount plus you get additional one year so you 14999 you get two year subscription instead of one year if you wish to go for mojo one mojo one is nothing but the the combination of uh, uh, the mojo professional plus you get turn around momentum and the reliable scheme also is a part of the package which comes at additional 5000 but again 90% discount and again that scheme has another one year free so in other words you pay 19999 and you get two years of subscription of course it's a very limited package uh, and it can offer can close very soon and here is a happy happy holiday to everyone uh, from not only from me but everyone at the markets mojo group so please avail this offer it's a very limited offer and with this let me brief upon how do we see the market what 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 how do we see the markets going ahead and then i'll hand it over to mohit to reveal our triple s strategy in front of everyone so if you remember on 16th feb mohit and i came in front of you and what was the loud and clear message we said that market looks overheated especially in the mid and small cap space and then what happened to the market if you look at this market in last one month 7.2% decline in small cap 2.7% decline in mid cap 1.3% decline in bse fund it and nifty was down by 0.03 but that does not give the the clear picture why because the 7.2 suggest in small cap is that 91% of the company declined from in last one month and only 91% com 91 companies uh, advance 91% is a 
decline. And when I go to the next slide, you will see the quantum of decline. Sometimes, you know, the beauty lies in the granular details. And that shows how much pain that we have seen. Of course, last two days has been fortunately good for the market. But, but, but the picture in last one month has been really a very, very, and I must thank many of you, uh, basically, who have uh, uh, really appreciated our move from moving away from media small cap, moving to the the large cap. In fact, uh, one of the our Mojo professional customer uh, who happens to be in one of our common group, and which uh, he's from Madhya Pradesh. Basically, he's from uh, 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 a place very closer to that uh, uh, what we call Bandhavgarh uh, Wildlife Sanctuary. And he said, "Thank first time in my life, I have been able to book profits, and thanks to the to the markets Mojo." So the decline has been so huge, and and the seven percent sometimes does not explain the pain many of our uh, investors had to go through because of medium small cap. And the data basically clearly shows you what happened. The percentage decline. So if you look at the seventy percent of the stocks have fallen much more than the BSE Finder. That's a benchmark that we use in our benchmark. The benchmark BSE Finder has gone up by only one point three percent, but more than seventy percent of the company basically went down more than that. One company went down more than. 40%, 20 companies declined more than 20%. And if you look at that, uh, uh, the data here, and if we can talk to, give it to you, see 20 companies more between 20 to 30%, 50 companies between 50 to 20. And if you look at the cumulative, 355 companies have declined at least by 3%. Okay, out of 500 companies. So that gives a, the, the, when the market falls, Remember, the index will fall less and the company within that part of the constituents will fall much higher than that. And that's why sometimes, you know, the pain in the portfolio is much sharper, much deeper than what you can see at the indices level. And I must tell you, someone is doing a fantastic job in keeping Sensex and Nifty at the decent level. And that's what is happening. So, what we did in PMS, because we, we realized we, our IP did suggest that uh, there could be pain uh, in the medium and small cap, we did four critical moves, okay? And one of the basic philosophy behind doing this is to basically wanted to conserve the capital. Because in, during uncertain time, during uh, uh, volatile time, you know, again, since today IPL is starting, we chose to save wicket rather than scoring for the runs and we wanted to basically co take a more conservative approach and we sold our small caps to move to the large cap. We did active profit booking in the mid cap counters and we have certain predefined threshold. So when that threshold has been met in the mid cap counters, we chose to lock in that profits. At the same time, wherever we wanted to, uh, when we realized it makes a lot of sense to move out of a likely underperformer, we chose to even book doing active loss booking. And whatever the money that we get after getting out of a small cap or profit booking in mid cap, we moved on the stocks which have come fresh in our master list within the large cap. By doing this, what we have been able to do that, we have been able to protect the capital for our PMS investors. We have been able to reduce the drawdown because that's the objective we wanted to achieve that. Now, the reason is that there is another philosophy we wanted to believe. For some reason, if media and small cap doesn't fall, because yes, we do take a rest, actually, am I right? If market would not have, because if you remember, till mid-fab, the small and mid-cap were outperforming the large cap by 3x and 4x YTD. And yet we took a call because we thought that's in the best interest of the customers. But for some reason, it did not have happened. Am I right on 16 fab? We said, okay, even for some reason, if the mid and small cap doesn't fall, we are anyway invested in the large and mid cap. So even though we may not do as good as uh, uh, the overall market, but at least we have been able to protect the capital. So we are fully invested. We are not taking any cash calls in this market. Am I right? Why? Because we have, what we have done, we have moved out from small cap. We locked in profits in mid cap, but that money has gone into large cap. So we have... In for some reason, if the market has to recover, we are recovery is inbuilt in our system. Of course, we may underperform for some more time. Why? 
because uh, if the, for some reason the medium and small cap under outperforms significantly to large cap, we may underperform. But our objective was to be cautious, and that's the reason we wanted to play a little safe with our investors. Now the question would come. If you think market is going to go down, why not to take a cash calls? Am I right? That's 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 a. That's a remember, it's easy to say that you can take a cash calls and you can make money. Again, I remind our investors. You know, somewhere in 2021, we hosted Ramdev Agarwalji on our webinar platform, and he admitted to me in that discussion. And the discussion is available uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. If you look at it, that he admitted. the one of his good friend i know whom he was referring to he said sunil he suggested advised me to get out of the market in january 2020 and and you know when the market crashed in march 2020 or exactly 4 years uh, uh, from this date uh, you know he i felt sunil he was absolutely brilliant why because market did come down and he was wise man to basically get out and he could lock in uh, in a taken a cash call but sunil In 2021, also he was still waiting for market to correct. He is not invested. So what happened? His call to take a cash call proved to be right for some period of time. He could not re-enter the market and then missed out the rally that took place post recovery in the in, in the market. So it sometimes is easy to basically figure it out. What is the top of the market is extremely difficult to basically time the market on the bottom side of the market. and that's why it's a we we call it double edged weapon cash calls most of the time it will go wrong if you speak to any season fund manager across the world they would say we don't know how to time the market because when you take a cash call that means you know for sure that you can time the market so what we did we are not trying to time the market what we are trying to do is that we are trying to conserve the capital but we are fully invested in the market so active investment is all about what what is the philosophy that we believe in we believe in that activeness is all about movement in the right market cap at the right time otherwise you would basically miss out on a big way both on the upside and on the downside very badly and that's exactly what we did we active investment is all about movement and this is a remember this uh, uh, wisdom and jot it down in a piece of paper or take a screenshot of that because this will work in your favor not only in this market but even decades to come again i repeat active investors all about movement in the right market cap at the right time and you need to remain stay invested because there will be a bounce back in the market and you if you are not ready for that then you will miss out on the rally so what happened what why what, we did this so we are the one basically who walk the talk uh, we don't only basically uh, 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 you know give gyan to you people but we don't follow uh, when it comes to the pms we did that very actively on 31st jan 2024 in our pms portfolio 15% was only large cap as of 28th march it's it stands at 88% you can see the mid cap which was 63% we lock in the profit is down to only 12% and small cap we have zero now from 22% and that's the kind of walk the talk we did that now the question is that ye to ho gaya aapne baat kar li 17 february ko what is your present view right now the last two days because of fed and see remember uh, you know i if you look at the the acp that is the summary of economic projection which has been released by fomc yesterday if you look at the, there is no change what they were saying in the december and 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 in the march the 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 the, the median target rate for 2024 remains the same what it was during the december three rate cuts and again in december they were talking about three rate cuts in march they are talking about three rate cuts but in 2025 that's a projects for next year the rate of interest would be still much higher than what they were predicting in december in other words in us the rate of interest are not going to come down as fast as it was projected in the month of december so in in other words the outlook of the fed is basically on the contrary has become more hawkish than the the dovish in the sense why because they do believe that inflation is going to remain sticky and if you all know what happened to the copper prices in recently or what happened to the crude oil prices 
they have gone up. And if that's the case, it could further stroke inflation. So Fed is not saying that uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, what they said and what they said in uh, March. In fact, the news are a little uh, uh, gone, not in favor of the market. In fact, it's not. But yet the market moved up. And that's why I said it's a Teflon effect. If you read my blog, which I wrote, in the good market, in the bullish market, no negatives will stick to the to the market. And in the bad time, no positive news will stick to the market. So today, the sentiment is so good in the US, the market is not willing to look at the, the negative news. And that's the thing. We do believe that market is likely to remain choppy in the short term. And there will be more pain in the mid and small cap segment. I again repeat, despite last two days rally that we have seen in the market, don't get carried away by that. Market is going to remain choppy and mid and small cap will see a underperformance. If you remember, in the January, first day of January 2024, and you look, normally ribbon memory is little, uh, uh, not as sharp as one would imagine. You may forget what was the target we had given, downside target. What's the downside risk to the indices, which we keep doing every year. If you remember last year, we had set 15,500 as a downside risk to the Nifty 50. And Nifty did, it, did touch 15,500 and then bounced back. And then I came in front of you and said, the indices, uh, Nifty is now looks poised for a rebound and it did rebound. So in January 2024, we said Nifty could go down. See, I'm not saying it will definitely happen. These are all uh, uh, predictions. You should take it with a tons of salt. Why? Because that's our belief. That's our uh, understanding. It may or may not happen. But we pre predicted that Nifty can go down to 19,000. Today we are at 22,000. What is the downset potential? Uh, this is 14%. I did mention there that mid-cap index potential downside could be 31,700. We are somewhere near about 38,500. So potential downside is near about 17%. And BHC small cap, our downside uh, 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 target for that indices was 35,000. We are near about 43,200 or so. So again, 17% kind of a decline. But we did mention that our year-end target for Nifty 50 would be near about 22,818 to 20,700, 20, which was 5% plus or minus of 2023 closing. We did mention in that presentation that mid and small cap will offer a single digit returns in 2024, but that returns would be non-linear. So if you still want to go through my uh, uh, equity outlook tour, it's all available on the YouTube, you can watch that. And this is what the prediction we talk about. Now, keeping this fact uh, and these parameters in mind, we de decided to come up with a triple A strategy. I'll request uh, Mohit to take over from me and please uh, help us understand what is this triple A strategy is all about. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, very happy seasons, uh, greetings, uh, happy Holi uh, and uh, we have uh, Good Friday and Easter on the way as well. So it's, uh, as Sunil said, season's time. And I wish you all a very happy season time for you and your family. Now, this is in continuation. This presentation is in continuation of what, what we had spoken good. the last time around. And I know that some of you are regulars in our webinars. And you do recall uh, that we had given a clear warning signal that there seems to be a large froth on the small cap. Uh, market cap uh, stocks, there seems to be a very, very large uh, froth on uh, uh, mid cap as well. And the froth seems to be a little lesser on the large cap side. And hence, uh, in the last presentation, we uh, had decided that we will diligently move from small caps to large caps. And as and when uh, mid cap stocks move out of the portfolios, we will keep plugging it back into the large caps till the time the froth moves out. The simple rationale, as Sunil has pointed out, is that markets have corrected uh, over the last one month. Index is, uh, you know, is not a very uh, reliable uh, performance giver uh, for portfolio management because mostly when the uh, index moves down, 
there are select fee few companies that are there to gain but a large proportion of companies do not gain that much and that is what we have seen that even if the index has you know for example the large cap index has moved down just about 0.3% on the negative side but 70% of the companies have declined out there or 30% of the companies have kind of held it back you know close to heart i can tell you that as sunil also pointed out is there somebody very very carefully is managing this particular index we personally believe that this is a, a rope that will get loosened up you know in sooner or later and you will have a sharp correction building in either pre election or my guess would be post election uh, for sure so we have approximately around 10 to 12% froth remaining across the market even despite the correction that we've already seen in the last one month having said that it is very very tough for anybody to gauge and say that uh, i will be able to find the bottom and then i would typically invest bottoms are not found side points of the bottoms can still be found so you can have a bottom at this point but i may be able to catch it a little here later or little you know on the upside uh, 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 a little early on so what we have discussed internally and what we are trying to do now is a lot of investors today who are sitting aside to benefit those investors whether you are existing pms investors whether you are new investors who want to invest uh, and take the benefit of the markets in the next 3 4 months because if you have 10 15 20 percent of froth coming out of the market there is no better way to enter but the problem is how do you enter uh, many many a cases have been defined uh, previously some uh, you know sunil defined right now uh, that many a time that you feel very happy about trying to find a bottom because you've been able to you know uh, get out or sit in cash uh, prior to a 7 10% fall but after that you don't have the strength to get in because you don't know which way the market is going to go whether it will continue its downward trend whether it will remain flat but with the downward trend or whether it will move up and you know that guessing is where we typically go wrong so you can be lucky once in a while but you can't be consistently lucky in taking cash calls what is sss sss is systematic staggered investment approach uh, which basically means that we are trying to not find the bottom but we are trying to see if there is a average line above the bottom that we can find because that is the best effort that anybody can do that with an sss approach you are saying that systematically i will try and invest over a period of time now that period is very important for us the next quarter 3 to 4 months will be very very defining for the market cycle that we are currently sitting in and we personally believe that this is not going to be a consistently downward trending market for the whole uh, calendar year slash fiscal year but we personally believe that election as an event may be a negative event for the markets primarily because if there is any attempt to hold the prices or hold the index per se that is going to get loosened up once the government gets formed i personally believe and i may be wrong it is you know it's a part of our job to give you educated uh, guesses sometimes my educated guess is that this time the election will carry more bad news in terms of equity market pricing not the election results but the way the market may behave because i think that grip is going to get loosened out uh, and uh, the uh, you know there's a lot of froth that will come out uh, post the election uh, results keeping in mind what is the sss approach we are trying to now average the bottom and not find the bottom so that's the first very important point that we are not trying to find the bottom we are not capable of finding the bottom nobody is capable of finding the bottom as i said consistently you may be lucky once in a while but consistently it is not a possibility of finding the bottom we have started taking fresh money in our portfolio management services but what we've decided is that that money and this is the first time during our launch of infinity or in pms that we're doing this 
we had adopted a staggered approach during the infinity times but we have never done something like this in the pms time during the infinity time also when we had staggered we had basically done a dumb staggering what is a dumb staggering which basically means that one third one third one third in 3 months that's known as a dumb staggering it is typically how sips work that you will on fifth depend it doesn't matter where where the market is but you will invest on that fifth of every month in infinity we had tried that we got very good results of that but this time we are trying to go one step further what we are saying is that let's assume that you put in more money in the pms or let's assume you open a new account in pms or let's assume you are a new investor who gives and starts a pms account first 50% of that amount so if you are investing say 50 lakhs 25 lakh of that amount will be invested in the first 0 to 60 days so we will invest gradually and systematically evaluating the market evaluating the valuations in the market evaluating the price to book ratios in the market evaluating what the in where in which direction the index can move evaluating which direction which market cap index will move and we will only get in with the first 50% in 0 to 60 days the balance amount which is the remaining 50% will be invested in anywhere in between 60 to 120 days so the total net that we are putting out to create a portfolio of 10 to 15 stocks is 120 days that we will be looking at trying to average out the bottom rather than find the bottom by making sure that with every falling event in the market we are putting in a little bit of a money to go in to try and say that we are getting lower prices out there this is a very good strategy that you can adopt for your personal portfolios as well but having said that be very careful because what you may find and decide as when to invest may not be the right time to invest and hence i would suggest that if you want to benefit of that make sure that you open a pms account or make sure if you are already a pms customer and you are waiting by the side give the money in the control where we can find out the time in between 0 to 60 days first to invest 50% and from 60 days to 120% 120 days now having said that let's assume that markets correct 15% or 20% in the next say one month or two months we can then prepone our approach and we say that there is enough froth and i don't need to wait for 120 days now and we can go in with a full 100% approach as well so this is a indicative timeline of 0 to 60 50% and 60 to 180 day, 120 days 50% but all of this is very future driven even if four months in the future we do not know which way the markets will move at what time and hence what we are saying is that we can postpone or prepone this particular branch but it becomes easier when we are running a pms because in pms you have given us that 50 lakhs or 1 crore and we are then trying to do the allocation across uh, the times where we feel the timing is right and timing is right for what market cap it is not a question of just the time being right and the markets have corrected but for what market cap the sheer definition of this you can see it very clearly when we said that large caps will correct less than the mid and small and that is something that we've seen and i think the last one month is just the start you will see a similar kind of correction coming forward correction is the best time to get in to the market correction is not the time to get out of the market if you are trying to profit book that time has gone now you are in the rally if you are now in the rally then the best thing would be to add more during the particular rally after a certain correction we had told you last time that we will come back to you and tell you when is the right time to invest we are today saying that if you give that money as a additional investment we are trying to find out a staggered approach in which we can deploy because by the time that we come out and give you a webinar and say that this is the right time by the time you fund the account the whole piece will unnecessarily cause delays and there would be spots and opportunities in the next four months where we will try and if not catch the bottom but maybe 10% above the bottom 5% above the bottom 2% above the bottom but on an average if we are able to do that in 3 4 cycles as well 
and i think somewhere average that we caught the, the bottom, bottom at say 3% discount that is also a great number to go home because once the market revives you have seen we showed you two cases of revival uh, in my last uh, presentation that we did with uh, you know with sunil where the markets cracked some 30% in 6 months and recovered 80% over the next 6 months and so on and so forth so the recovery is always much faster uh, in 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 markets when you have a steep correction and we have to make sure that that steep correction is used as a step down investment process when will we go back to higher allocations to small caps uh, as i said the last time as well that based on our ip we will guide an increase allocation to small cap for the benefit of all of you uh, we will come back and tell you when we are going back into the uh, small caps uh, once we feel that enough froth uh, is uh, out we will also track valuations and performances of mid and small caps to gradually increase allocations as and when we feel that they are now fairly valued and for us to go back into the market, we will inform you and we will take that step. We are micromanaging each and every portfolio and each and every you know, strategy that is playing out in the market to make sure that we are invested right. The correction in mid and small cap has been steep for, uh, you know, five odd percent in mid cap, seven odd percent in small cap. And I think that you know, once they go to around 15, 17%, we will relook at whether we want to touch them or whether if the market is still in the negative sentiment to wait further. You never know whether they can correct 10%, 15%, 20%, or maybe 25%. But it is also a question of evaluating the market caps versus the overall market sentiment and then taking that call. Downside target, obviously, we have in our minds, we have shown you the downside target, as Sunil pointed out, that we are further seeing a downside of around 17 odd percent in mid and small caps uh, from the present level as per our Jan prediction. We are standing strong on that prediction. We are not changing that particular prediction unless something excellent happens where we feel that that revision of the target of the uh, mid and small cap needs to be done. As always, we can be wrong and hence, you know, we are devising every specific strategy, keeping in mind that we are not too wrong, even if we are not right, that we do not go too wrong because, you know, when uh, there is the value at risk, that phenomena that you play, you are basically saying that I know what the value at risk is. I know what my downside potential is. And I need to make sure that my downside is as restricted as possible. You cannot be saying that in this downward falling market, I need to start giving positive returns. But you're saying that as my markets go down, how do I keep protecting the returns that I have in the portfolio to make sure that when the rebound and, you know, so you may, the challenge is that in these kind of times, you may go a little conservative like we have done. We've gone towards over 80% in large caps. But that conservatism has to be very quickly turned around into aggression by going back into mid and small cap when the upside potential of the market comes. And hence, we are not taking any cash calls. Cash calls meaning sitting on cash. Maybe, you know, you take out the cash. But this whole move happens so fast that it will come at a cost of 5 to 10 to 15% of return deterioration. And hence, cash call is completely out of the way where we are not going to take cash calls. What should you do as an investor? As we have said that don't increase your exposure. You want to do additional investments. You had money kept aside for uh, investing uh, into equity markets. We are today saying that that is a good point. This is a good point to start putting it back. Having said that, do not you know, get too excited about trying to do it yourself. You may see some sporadic returns to yourself. You may see, Are, mera to PMS portfolio is down, my personal portfolio is up. All of those things will keep coming to you and keep tending you that, you know, uh, that meto, I can manage this personally better than these guys and all this stuff. But you will see as the time passes, you will see as the recovery comes. We have heard this story, I can tell you around 800 times in the last eight years. That clients say that I can do it better. And then finally, when it hits them, then they realize that, oh my God, ye suddenly kaisa ho gaya ke in like so much amount of time, 
my uh, personal portfolio underperformed and their portfolio ran because the the time frame and the velocity at which you are looking the portfolios and the ability at which you feel that the you know downgrades will happen or the upgrades will happen are completely different if you are doing a portfolio management approach versus if you are doing a uh, you know personal uh, approach out there you may stand out winner in a shorter period of time i will be really surprised if you stand out a winner or a big winner in the longer period of time and that is something that we've seen all our investing life that uh, if you are diligent in your approach of fund management if you are diligent in your approach of maintaining a discipline which something that comes to us naturally uh, that on a longer period of time will always uh, outperform the uh, normal investor returns unless obviously you are an excellent investor which can be the case where you have a right aptitude and right caliber to keep investing over a period of time then that's a very different case altogether as as i pointed out earlier we are longer term we are bullish on the market in the mid to long term it's a question of the next 4 to 5 months where we personally feel that there is some kind of a downward potential that is there very clearly indicated in our numbers uh in our pre previous presentations as well but i think if you see a bear to a bull market turn around that may happen in this year itself but we need to be ready we need to be aware we need to be awake we need to be in the money in the markets during that particular turn around we talk about historical cases of how a market fell and then how it recovered that how a market fell and how it recovered according to me is going to happen this year whether you are ready or not is something that will clearly depend on um uh, on you over the next 4 to 5 years markets in the previous i think 10 to 15 years have done around 12 13% cagr and we are saying that we are going to be maintaining in the next 3 to 5 years almost a similar or a better rate of 14 to 15% return i think everything apart from this extra valuation and that is the extra valuation is a proof of the pudding that you know the markets have run because the economics of the markets the underlying strength of the market is strong and sometimes that extra strength gives you that extra rubber to run faster and suddenly you realize that i have run much faster than what my strength is as soon as the market comes back to that little bit of you know less heat in the market that strength of the economy is always there the thing has changed out there and that is going to drive the market much faster than maybe it is driven over the last 3 to 5 years obviously we will try and outperform the market uh, you know patience and discipline are very very essential in the soul game <laughs> so you know humans are not capable of appreciating the unseen the mistakes that are not made when the risks were avoided today i may beat around uh, and i you know completely we do this analysis all the time aisa hota to kya hota and aisa hota to kya hota wo uh, that whole story of kehta bhi diwana sunta bhi diwana you know i have kept saying this whole thing that when we look at our allocation change on the back we always test and say that whether this allocation this step that we took did it work or it did not work one of the you will you might say trustworthy thing or foolish thing about us is that every time we go wrong we come to you every time we are going coming we go right we we come to you and that is something that we've always maintained as a honest and trustworthy approach to our clients that our assumptions are assumptions our assumptions are best efforts which with, with which we change our investing strategy and every time where we go wrong or right we will come and either blow the drum or blast the drum in front of you without the fear of being apprehended by our investors without the because you know that is the relationship that we have with all of you so we personally believe that that honesty and trust is the only thing that markets mojo stands by and every employee in markets mojo stands by uh this is a special holy holy offer that we have given we are giving one year free on one year uh for both mojo professional and it's a massive massive discount i would say we are going to end uh this particular year with this particular discount which is which is a very very massive discount i uh, i really see these kind of numbers of 84% discount and 90% discount uh it's as close to giving it free as possible 
uh, Mojo Professional goes is going for 14999 for one year plus one year free. Uh, very, very limited offer. Uh, this is uh, only available for these webinar users through the link that you will see. Uh, it's a webinar offer as we call it. Uh, for all you know, uh, all you guys who don't know what is a webinar offer, our webinar offers are lower than the offers that are there across the site. We give benefit for people who are attending and spending time with us for a better offer. And 14999 for one year plus one year free. And Mojo One is at 19999 for one year, also one year free. So this is a great time as it is a good time to buy stocks when the markets are down, it may be a good time to buy the package when the markets are down because when the markets are up, we'll also, and our sentiments will also go up in terms of pricing the product higher. So 19999 for one year, which is a 90% off on Mojo Professional is our generous, uh, holy uh, offer to you. Uh, I hope you guys renew this multiple times. You guys know that you can renew this multiple times. So if you buy this three times, that means that you get three years plus three years free. You actually get six years package in a cost of three years, which is uh, no other platform gives you a capability of extending like that, that if I take it three times, then I'll get three years and three years free. And, uh, you know, you can hedge yourself on a six year price increase with Markets Mojo. This is a, a ho this is a holy offer and will obviously end very soon. So I, I you know, I uh, request all of you to try and subscribe as soon as you can so that you don't have the fear of this offer ending and you not being able to subscribe to it. With that note, uh, uh, we will now enter the Q&A with Sunil and me. Please ask your questions on the chat box and then we can take them one by one. Right, sir. So firstly, we have Mr. Methun Sarkar. Uh, he's wishing the entire Mojo team happy Holi. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Wish you a happy Holi as well. Please wish your family from the Markets Mojo family as well, sir. So moving on to this first question, uh, it's from Mr. Datta. Hello, Mohit ji and Sunil ji. Good evening. As per your suggestion, I have sold off all small and mid cap stocks. May I use the available cash in starting a model portfolio? What would be your suggestion? Yeah, so as I said that if you're starting to use a model portfolio as we are taking an approach of uh, staggering uh, over the next say four odd months, and this is a moving view. When I say this is a moving view, the the thing that we can't do in model portfolio and what we can do in uh, PMS because in PMS we manage the money directly is we decide when to enter. So I don't have to take your permission and, and tell you when to enter. But in model portfolio, I think that onus of uh, that entry point comes on to you. So if you are willing to uh, take that, please invest the money in model portfolio. My humble request would be if you're doing that, then at least, you know, simplistically speaking, and I can go wrong, uh, please take this with the full disclaimers out there, is that uh, get into the market over the next, uh, say, four odd months with 25% allocation each month, depending on, you know, uh, finding some kind of lows in the market. As I said, difficult one to task to give you, but that is how, you know, don't go in one shot, uh, go in uh, maybe four equal shots over the next, say, four months. That is an easier and a simpler way to get this. So this next question is from Mr. Johnson. Hi, Mohit. Uh, nice strategy. How do you quantify the froth in the market and what are the indications that the froth is reducing? So, see, we had uh, given a very detailed analysis of our hypothesis out here, Mr. Johnson. Uh, we had uh, spoken about uh, price to book. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, price to book uh, of uh, uh, almost 3.5, uh, which is uh, on small cap, 3.5 on mid cap, which has been a high of the last 15 years. We had spoken about market cap to GDP ratio, we said that we are closing into 130% on market cap to GDP. Historically, we've been at around 85%. So there is a lot of uh, uh, data points that we had given in the last uh, presentation that <clears throat> that is available uh, for Mojo PMS uh, users. I, I think that is available, right, Sunil, or that is uh, not? For PMS customers is available, Mohit. Yeah, for PMS for customers, all of that is available. Please have a look at that. Uh, so there we had clearly indicated that looking at all of this, we are seeing, a, you know, a upwards of 15% kind of a correction uh, and the froth uh, that we're seeing. More so on small caps, very high on small caps, then on mid caps and the large 
caps had you know had a higher valuation but the froth was not that deep uh, so those things we had uh, well sunil is able to find this out and sunil if you can just cover two three of those slides yeah so if you can look at this uh, uh, basically in front of you uh, if you look at the market cap and this was the data that we have taken uh, uh, on fab and if you look at the data the market cap to gdp so, ratio uh, uh, you know, assuming, you know, assuming that, that India would have near about 300 lakh crore uh, GDP by the end of uh, 2024, and the market was 387 lakh crore, the market to GDP was 129 person. And if you look at, and if you extend by one year, that's one year forward, India would nearly have about, because we are assuming 10.5 percent nominal GDP growth for the next financial year, that is 1st April 2024 to 31st March 2025, we, the India's GDP would be near about 330 lakh crore. And, and assume there is no jump in the market cap, 387 lakh crore, remain 387 lakh crore, we would still be at 117% of the, of the GDP. Now, if you look at historically, India has been commanding near about 82% uh, kind of a average in last 15 years. Now, someone can always argue that since India is going to grow much faster as compared to what it has been historically, and logically we should command, definitely we should command. But if you look at, and that the comparable example could be the China, and if you look at the China's market cap GDP, the highest it has ever achieved was 121% in 2007. So by that standard also, we are a little running ahead of the uh, this one. So because China was one of the fastest growing econ economies for many years in a row, and yet it could command 121%, the highest ever in 2007. So we believe that's a fraud that is there and that if you look at these are data, which are the country which are commanding higher, it's not that uh, uh, in absolute value, this is the highest we are commanding because US is almost 2x, uh, Japan is only about 1.5x and Canada about 1.35 and company with country with the lower GDP market, because GDP is only about uh, you know, China, Germany, so and so forth. So that matrix also it looks a little higher in terms of market cap to GDP and if you look at the mid cap, the price to Book value, which Mohit was mentioning about, we're at all time high, 3.61. That's for the mid cap. And if you look at the small cap, we were at 3.5x. So when you look at all this data, it does give us a feeling that there is a reason for market to correct. And the froth is not the word. So we use the word froth uh, somewhere in 16 Feb, but you must have listened to uh, Sebi Chairman very recently, where she also mentioned about the froth in the mid and small cap, uh, somewhere I think in the the first week of March also. So there is a froth uh, uh, in the mid and small cap and that has to really come off. Now, when do we realize it's going to come back? So we are going to definitely look at uh, 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 what is happening to the to the valuation of mid and small cap, what the commentary that's going to come out from the March, March 2024 numbers. And of course, we'll closely watch uh, what, what the market cap to GDP ratio and based on that, uh, we'll uh, revisit the numbers. So this next question is uh, from Mr. K.S. Brar. Dear Mohit and Sunil, my question needs answer with serious consideration. My PMS returns since inception six months ago are 1.97% uh, as against 13.7% benchmark. And my own three personal portfolios return is 25 to 30% with majority Mojo stocks during same period. In my opinion, Mojo IP seems very lazy in corrective actions as well as stock selections being bit contrarian. At this rate, I fear my returns are going to be nowhere near expected Mojo back tested indicated figures and I will be paying for even underperforming Nifty benchmarks. Sir, it's been seven, eight months that we have started uh, the uh, Mr. Barad, uh, the uh, portfolio. I think it's too short a period uh, for you to evaluate. I think fund managers don't even answer any question till at least three years pass out there. At least we are coming and answering uh, these questions every week. Having said that, your concern is not invalid. I would not, uh, you know, uh, shove aside uh, your concerns. Uh, we have uh, look, we have been looking at all the portfolios. The kind of companies that we are holding are very, very good quality companies. And it's a matter of time. I can assure you, and we can have this discussion a year later as well, that you would be reversing your statement uh, on the call itself that your personal portfolios may not be doing as good as the uh, portfolio. Now, the difference in Mojo stocks and what we do is actually what we are what we're doing is that we are not doing a lazy management we are doing much more active management than you and me can uh, think of we are watching every company like a hawk and we are making sure that we uh, you know are in the right position 
poised for the future, not looking at what we are doing today, but poised for the future because everything that you're doing today is to find out, uh, you know, what are the best stocks for the future. Mojo stocks is an excellent choice of stocks. It's not anywhere uh, 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 lesser, uh, you know, intensive uh, stocks. And there can be periods of underperformance to Mojo stocks. But on an overall basis, uh, it was very simple for us to just do a Mojo stock portfolio, right? We have done, we have known that in a, in a, yeah, if you were to look at at a three to five year period, there is there is no comparison itself. I won't even compare if there was not a hundred percent outperformance to Mojo stocks when we do our internal testing platform. And hence, we are very very certain that uh, they, it's a matter of time where uh, you know this will take off. And once it takes off, and we've seen we've seen some portfolios are you know doing. Uh, uh, amazingly well, amazingly well. And we are seeing some portfolios are taking time to take off. It's a matter of time. Just give it some time because in the journey of portfolio management, where you come at different times, you have selection of stocks, which are different. We sometimes feel that there are some portfolios that take a little time to take off. But I'm not, uh, Mr. Barar, I'm really not worried about this as, as of now. So this next question is from Mr. Ganesh. What strategy to be approached by model portfolio? How do we invest fresh cash? As I cannot opt for PMS due to PMS minimum amount requirement. Well, I had just, I think, answered uh, Ganesh that uh, question. Uh, uh, that was my first answer to the question that if you do not have much money to invest in PMS, then I think model portfolios can be invested with a 25% allocation each to your total amount that you want to invest over the next four months. And as I said, I would put that with a disclaimer. This is my guess. Uh, we can go wrong on this, but uh, I think it will only do one thing is that it, it will not do a smart staggering, but at least it will do a staggering. Uh, smart staggering is that when we decide that, oh, markets have corrected 10%, let's put in everything now. That is something that, uh, you know, only time will tell. And uh, we can do that if we are on the PMS umbrella, but on model portfolio, I can tell you, if you want to have a Better strategy than investing everything today would be to invest in 25% each tranche for the next four months. So this next question is uh, from Mr. Tahir. Dear sir, there is a looming election in US also mid-October. How it may affect the global sentiment? So let me take this. Uh, this uh, so, Ahilji, if you remember, uh, you know, see, sometimes, you know, these elections are little, little hyped event. And I'll give you with a, a live example. Uh, if you remember in 2019 uh, or 2000, sorry, uh, this was in uh, 2024. So, 2000, uh, when 2024, so 20 and 16, we had two events simultaneously happening, you know, where uh, Trump won the election. It was not expected at that point of time, if you remember. On the same night, India announced uh, a not bandi. You know, uh, we had this demonetization of 500 rupees and 1000 rupee not. And, uh, you know, everyone was uh, like, because Trump was not supposed to be uh, uh, friendly for the market and, uh, you know, and that this game on. And then there was a fear in the market that the market will crash. And what happened after that? Nothing happened, in fact. No one talks about it. No one remembers that. So yes, there is an uh, election in US which is going to uh, uh, forget about the Indian market. Even the US market, I don't think is going to react uh, purely because of the US election. If at all there is a kind of an event that's going to or impact that's going to be there, is one or two days, not beyond that. Uh, uh, so I don't think it's an event that one to be really bothered about uh, as far as the India is concerned. You know, uh, we have seen many times the market do have an opinion that if this uh, person come win the election, it would be positive or it would be negative. And eventually, uh, when that, that event happens, market seems to be indifferent to that. And, and in India also, we had seen that kind of stuff happening in 2004 and 2009 election, general election. If you remember, in 2004, no one was expecting uh, BJP to lose election because of uh, India signing campaign. And, and the market did go down. And what happened after that? Market recovered smartly. The market was indifferent uh, whether uh, BJP came or not came. And, and in 2009, when the Congress won the election, again, market hit the upper circuit. So in one on one event, 
market went down because it, it Congress won the election and the second <laughs> even the the Congress won and market went up and hit the upper circuit. So I don't think market is too much uh, uh, concern about uh, you know you would have seen in U.S. history. Uh, whether it's a democratic or republic, uh, uh, market seems to have uh, just uh, uh, ignored and based, kept on moving based on the economic parameters. And if you look at the long-term chart of US, uh, uh, Dow or S&P 500, you would see a huge uh, uh, perpendicular upside uh, happening to the indices irrespective of which party and who formed the government. So I don't think it's an event that we need to be really bothered about. So this next question is uh, from Mr. Deepan. Uh, he's asking, what is uh, Mojo One and Mojo Pro uh, Professional Packages? Sir, Mojo Professional Package is uh, the uh, stock research, stock recommendations. Uh, you get research reports, you get switcher reports if you're holding a stock, what you can switch in. You get even model portfolios, uh, up to five model portfolios out there and you get your personal portfolio advisory out there. So that is your uh, Mojo Professional package. Mojo One package is all of that I said in Mojo Professional. Plus, uh, there are three uh, other uh, products that you get in that, which is turnaround strategies for high-risk investors. Turnaround strategies, uh, you get uh, momentum now strategies, uh, momentum now strategies which are in current momentum. So irrespective of which market cycle you are in, but in this market, whether even if it is a downward market, which are the stocks that are doing well within that. So you get advice on that uh, and reliable performers. So three uh, different strategies of looking at stocks for a higher possible return than the uh, conventional uh, you know, uh, top stock approach is added onto the Mojo One platform. And that's the reason Mojo One is available for 1999 plus one year free, so for two years. And Mojo Professional is available for 14999 for one year, plus one year free. So this next question is from uh, Captain Frank. Greetings, Mohit and Sunil. Accenture's tepid outlook implies more pain for Indian IT even in FY25. Kotak institutional equity set further cuts in short cycle discretionary pro projects is a negative for companies such as Wipro, LTI Mindtree emphasis your observations on this, please. So I think uh, uh, you are right. You are right that, right that uh, and, and, and this should not come as a surprise if you remember uh, one of the global IT software company when they announced the numbers uh, for December they did mention that they don't expect the outlook to be uh, very very strong. Now you know market is a function of uh, what is there in the price. Am I right? And if you look at Despite the gloom and doom kind of a scenario, IT is one of the best performing sector in 2024. Am I right? Uh, uh, and, and this is despite the news that uh, the, the, the out budget is not going to be increased and so on and so forth. At the same time, if you look at what has happened is that uh, company like TCS and so on and so forth, they are basically want to onboard the employee much quicker and, and, and they've given the mandate. Okay, if you can join the company faster, you will get incentive to uh, join the company. That clearly gives an indication that there are some kind of a divergence views coming in that on one hand, some of the companies are seeing good kind of a, uh, uh, what we call uh, order inflow that they're expecting. And see, if you look at the US economy, is remaining very, very strong, resilient. In fact, no one talks about the word art now in the, in the US economy uh, because the things are really uh, good. Even if you look at the yes yesterday, that data on the employment came, continue to remain very, very uh, strong kind of a, uh, a scenario. So, and, and, and there's another thing, see, we, we need to remember, the market is a function of, one is that how company is going to perform, and there's some technical reason, you know, if, if someone has to basically, like we have seen heavy selling by FII on the banking stocks, okay? Now, if they really want to remain in India, then only one sector that can absorb that kind of a liquidity is the IT sector. And that money is basically moving to the, to the IT sector. So yes, there are concerns on the on, on the growth side. I think we'll get more clarity, more color on that. Because when the company declared their December numbers, uh, they, 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 the December quarter numbers, they declared in the first week of January. And most of the US companies at that time of time were in a Christmas vacation. The new budget of the new year get decided 
somewhere in the uh, mid january uh, to the last week of january so when they are going to declare the numbers for the march quarter which will happen in the next 15 to 20 days i think we'll get more color on that how our indian companies are seeing uh, demand outlook remember some of these companies are doing a very good job on ai and ai seems to be the 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 season's flavor okay so uh, uh, that's where we need to uh, uh, come to know what kind of uh, work this some, some of our it software companies are doing so sometimes the overall picture may not look exciting but the one strip of that revenue that is ai if that school looks very exciting they may continue to outperform we have seen what happened with some of the company which is attached to uh, uh, you know ai like who would have thought last year that microsoft could be more valuable as compared to apple but purely because of uh, the acquiring the stake uh, in the in the chat gpt it become a uh, uh, most valuable company in the world so i think that's that's the story which is going to unfold so right now yes doesn't look very exciting in terms of discretionary spending right now we'll get more color when this company is going to come out with the numbers and i think my sense is that the commentary should be more optimistic than the pessimistic otherwise itcs would not have gone on the record saying that we want to pre pawn onboarding of their employees and they are giving incentive that means they see a robust demand going ahead especially ai going to be a big big, big game changer So this next question is uh, from Mr. Bhange. Mohit sir, your comments on recent electoral bonds and its impact on stock market. Can I uh, request Sunil to take this up, please? He is a better mind on this than I am. So uh, I there think is no, there is no uh, 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 thanks, Mohit. There is no kind of an uh, impact because of electoral bonds. We have seen that it has been there in the public domain. and see these are the events will keep happening uh, in the history of uh, uh, any market will it have any meaningful impact the answer is no in fact you will not ask me bange sir you will you will forget after 15 days there was such event like this so please ignore don't waste your time and energy on such a uh, taiwa things in india we know that politician need money to run uh, 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 to uh, to run the organization to run the election they need to spend money on election and they will do that so i don't think it's an as in any impact whether positive or negative on the indian equity market so this next question is from mr durgesh dear sirs good evening and happy holi is the bjp win if the bjp win uh, which looks almost certain fully priced in the current market or do you foresee some more upward movement after the win i see downward movement sir because it is priced in as you rightly said if bjp wins uh, i think the rope will get released and i think as we uh, twice uh, sunil and me pointed out that somebody is managing the market very well uh, till the time the elections are there uh, i personally feel that the markets will correct uh, even if there is a thumping win of bjp uh, post the elections i don't know what sunil's view are but these are my personal views uh, and i said that i can go wrong on these but these are my my personal views So there is a very famous saying in the market: "Get buy on rumor and sell on news." If that is going to happen, and see, remember, people forget. That's why I say people have very short memory. You remember in 2019 election, BJP got more number of seats than what they got in 2014. And if you look at the data, the market was down three months down the line by minus six percent or something, despite BJP winning more number of seats. Okay. So that's how the market works. Uh, so buy on rumor, sell on news. And as you rightly said, it's priced in. So I don't think BJP winning election is a bull event. For some reason, if the ND is going to get less than 400 seats, I think market will term it as a negative. Uh, because the day Ma uh, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Modi made a statement in the Parliament that uh, the BJP will get more than 370 and NDA will get more than 400 seats, the market did move up. So that means market had factored in that. Now if anything less than that. it will be considered as a little negative uh, in the market so this next question is from uh, mr pawadia sir in pms you sold all mid caps is the same suggested to model portfolios also with 
uh in the uh, pms we are taking a uh, you know a call to get out of all small caps we have already taken that call and uh, go into mid caps but i think in model portfolio if you see our uh, uh, existing portfolio if you were to make uh, essentially that portfolio is made with a very large set of uh, uh large caps and mid caps and uh, i don't think there's hardly any small caps coming today if you were to make a port, uh, model portfolio so in a way the answer is yes that uh, the exposure to small caps is limited in the model portfolio advice as well so this next question is from uh, mr nanda kumar will you be giving a model portfolio consisting of mojo one and mojo professional stocks like diwali portfolio please advise whether any change is needed in the diwali portfolio i think suni uh, karan on a weekly basis covers this uh, so i uh, he's he's covering this on a weekly basis with you in case there is any change in the diwali portfolio we are doing this religiously since the time we launched uh, the diwali portfolio so you can refer to the last uh weeks karan's uh, you know uh, new additions to mojo stocks and that's where he covers the diwali portfolio as well <clears throat> currently we have uh, no plans of launching a, a mojo one model portfolio which is considering all the four um, uh, you know uh, products together but that would be done in the next maybe six odd months so we are waiting for some time before we launch that and uh, i'm sure there is uh, you know there is some very exciting opportunity that we are going to launch over the next 2 3 months very very deep uh, deeply interesting um, and uh, you will see as as and when we reveal that so just uh, to because uh, i because think i think uh, i was also attending that current webinar the other day and there are three company that has moved out of the dipavali portfolio and replaced those those uh, three companies with new set of companies three sort so i think as moi rightly said you can refer to current's last week uh, this week webinar only where he did this and then you will be able to see the changes he made in uh, the pavali portfolio so this next question is from mr rahul markets have extended their rally and portfolios are underperforming however i trust the ip and believe small cap should correct within next 3 to 4 months waiting to add cash into the small caps sure sir i i i'm i'm not i i got what your view is uh, i i don't know whether i missed any question if there was any there i think he's making a statement mohit there right so i think i'm mirroring your statement sir so this next question is from mr meethan do you think it is time to enter the mojo one stocks absolutely why not as i said that allocation is staggered is what we are suggesting we are not saying that stay out of the market we see a month back when we said markets had not gone down or mid caps or small caps had not gone down 5 7% respectively today we are saying that we have started seeing that correction and we need to start planning into getting into the markets in a staggered way that's all that we are saying so whether you want to use mojo pms if you have 50 lakhs and above excellent choice whether you want to use model portfolio then do a, a straight staggering of 4 months and the same applies to mojo one whether you want to create a mojo one portfolio then straight apply a staggering of 4 months so this next question is from ms lakshmi mohit sir why is markets mojo not present on small cases that may help small investors so it's a decision that we had uh, taken that if you want markets mojo services then uh, you know you have to come to markets mojo we are not on any platform uh, you are right we are not on small cases we are also not on any other uh, particular platform where there are you know a uh, number of investors and i think smaller investors can come to markets mojo i don't know why you're saying that uh, the smaller investors because there if you take two three portfolio somebody is charging 0.25 somebody is charging 2 and 1/2 1000 5000 and all the stuff here today i am talking about a 7900 uh, effective pricing 14999 plus one year free so this is for small investors the platform is made for small investors uh, our uh, pms platform is for you know uh, hni because you have a restriction of 50 lakhs but markets mojo's platform is made for the smaller investors and we have maintained that over the last uh, almost 10 years of our existing existence today uh that is the reason that we keep coming out even if the prices have increased we keep coming out with these offers so that you can benefit out of it but absolutely i mean uh, i think 
even if you go to small case and you take two portfolios you will end up paying 10000 rupees so you know here if you uh, you get the whole platform forget the portfolios you get research you get recommendations you get listing of top stocks you get research reports you get switching reports you get screeners you get everything together so uh, i think it is the cheapest possible platform i'm uh, sorry for saying that for my own company but in terms of price point it is it is that and it is yet the most effective and the most performing platform that uh, at least i have seen with a neutral eye in the market so this question is from mr amit i am a mojo one subscriber valid till january 2027 with your new offer can i extend my offer further yes you can offer uh, extend your uh, offer further uh, till 2027 then you know if you take this one year offer plus one year free you will become a member till 2029 so you can extend it i must point out though that this this offer is valid for a very uh, is is valid for uh, you know a very very small time and it's available on the link that you see that uh, must have been put on the you know on the chat uh we will also send you the link after this particular webinar into your mailbox so make sure that if you are extending this offer offer from uh, extend from that link because you get better pricing if you do that so this question is from uh, mr praful gala hello mohit and sunil happy holi to you all as a strategy the you. as a strategy Perfect. the money that i had kept aside i have invested in gold do you think it is a right move or should i add in pms also can i now start using infinhub thanks let so me let me answer first part and let mohit answer the infinhub part so i think uh, you know we always said that uh, uh, gold as an investment allocation uh, should be 10 to 15 but that should not be a function of a uh, the view on the gold because it gives a lot of uh, stability to the your total overall assets so if your gold allocation as a part of your total wealth has gone beyond 10 to 15 percent please move away from gold and silver and start uh, adding money to the to the pms that's the way if it is still below 15 percent then don't do that that's why i would not advise you to do that and mohit uh, uh, if you can uh, uh, answer about the infinab if you don't mind so uh, the answer is yes Uh, Mr. Gala, Infinab's IP is fully revitalized, and we've already updated the IP on the site. Uh, the reason we've not done a big bank launch is that we are just updating the portfolios now. Uh, US model portfolios are already updated with the new IP changes. Uh, some of the other countries' model portfolios we are working on, and we were in the process of updating. But if you are looking at US, if you are looking at Canada, if you are looking at Mexico, all of these places, the IP is fully updated. um and the ip is ready for use you can absolutely go ahead and now we are at par or better than what we have done in india in terms of the infinite of ip uh, it's already up and running sir that's it with the qna sir all right thanks a lot and wish you seasons greetings wish you a very happy holi to you and your family and uh, please uh, wish them all from uh, the markets mojo family and hope to see you soon thank you Thanks a lot